We've had uh, one of the longest continued downpours for many a year and the rivers are very very high. In fact I'm going to be heading up in deep into the upper valley of a tailwater to actually find some fishable water. But what this does give me a chance to show you uh, are some what we call European style nymphing techniques and these are a couple of my flies that I use extensively using these techniques. Of course you can use the Czech nymphs and Polish nymphs that these techniques uh, uh, were designed for, uh, these flies were designed for, but I prefer bead-headed nymphs like many anglers because with a bead-headed nymph it allows you to precisely control the weight of the flies as we fish them. So these are a couple of patterns I'm going to show you for short line and long nymphing styles which I'll be demonstrating on, on the river and con this is contact fishing, there's going to be no fly line involved whatsoever and these are a couple of cracking little flies that caught me many many fish and I'm sure that uh, uh, they'll be successful for you so this is the first uh, fly I'm going to tie and I'm, I'm using quite simply a size 14 jig hook, this is a Napek barbless Czechoslovakian hook um, I'm using some power silk as thread. This is copper, but any color is fine. I'll be using uh, one CDC feather and my favorite material, of course, some partridge and a little bit of hazier substitute. So it's a very, very simple fly, very fast to tie, and it's very effective. So I'll start the tie now. So this is a very quick uh, fly to tie, and the bead on here, by the way, is a 2.8 millimeter black tungsten bead. The most important aspect of when we're fishing European style nymphing styles is the weight of the flies. That's the most critical aspect, so the weight of the flies is quite important. I'm expecting the river to be very, very high, so I'm going to be tying flies around a 3 millimeter size and I'll be fishing two. So I'm going to show you the two flies that I'll fish with today on the stream. So I've caught in the thread and I'm simply going to tie in a little bit of partridge for the tail. Now this is actually supposed to be imitating a caddis pattern. However, and a caddis doesn't actually have a tail but it adds a bit of movement to the fly and I'm not a great believer in realistic patterns. I'm more a believer in patterns that have some form of intrinsic movement. So. After I've tied in the tail, I'm just going to use a bit of this pale here's the substitute dubbing for the body. And I'm not going to make the fly too neat. I like a, a scruffy profile in the fly. Adds, in my opinion, a bit of fishiness. And I'm tying a little bit more material than that. That's a little bit looser than I wanted. I'll just add a bit more. That's better. So I get a nice scruffy profile. And because this is a, a caddis, I'm going to add a bit of green dubbing near the head. A bit of contrast. It's not essential, this. And that's a, a pretty little fly which will catch fish. But here are the two killers that really make it special. Again, it's the motile material. This is English partridge. If you can't get English partridge, any partridge will be fine. And I'm going to tie in a hackle near the bead. Two or three turns. Tie that off. Trim off the excess. So that, that's already got a lot of inherent movement and now I'm going to add a CDC feather. I'm going to tie this in by the tips as well and add some CDC fibres and these give the appearance of breathers. If you ever do a kick sample in a river and see the invertebrates that trout feed on, you'll notice the breathers are the most apparent thing on these insects. These are the, to keep oxygen flowing 
is rapidly oscillating the water. So the partridge gives the impression of legs, adds a bit of movement, and the CDC represents the breathers of these types of insects, the gills basically. So that's the fly essentially finished. Looks very rough and ready on the vise. However, as I hope to demonstrate, just tie that off with a whip finish. Pull that tight. Tidy that up. And this is a pattern that I'll be fishing on the point of the nymphing rigs that I'll be demonstrating later on the stream. Both the short styles, such as the Czech and Polish styles, and the long styles, such as French nymphing. I'll use this on the point. And as we see, it's got lots of inherent movement. It looks like no particular one insect, but it has lots of movement and it's very attractive. So that's the first fly. So this is the second very simple, very fast but very effective fly I'm going to be showing you. Uh, I'm going to be fishing this on the dropper on the French nymphing or European style nymphing rig. And this is a 3mm tungsten fly, a 3mm tungsten beaded fly. So, And it's very fast to time but, and very effective hopefully as we'll see. So catching the thread. And for the tail, again, I'll use a bit of the partridge fibers, a few of the partridge fibers. I'm not a fan of Cop de Leon in tails. I know that it's a material that's very in vogue, but I, I prefer more motile materials, and partridge is one of my favorites. Superb material. Nice little tail on the fly now. Basically, this represents a Betis nymph or an olive nymph. So I'm going to give it a nice olive body and not as much material as for the caddis pattern on the point. Get that nice olive profile body very quickly. <clears throat> and at the top, I'm just going to add in a small amount of very dark dubbing, which represents the wing cases on these types of insects. So I get a nice olive profile in the fly very quickly and for the hackle again I'm using partridge but this time it's Hungarian partridge which has been dyed olive and I'm just going to put a soft hackle around this bead which adds a lot of that intrinsic movement that fish find very attractive. And then when that's in, just tie that off, trim off the excess, and we'll see just how quick a tie that was. I'm not particularly bothered about where, which direction any of the partridge sticks out. I mean, the fish don't seem to care. I'll simply whip finish behind the bead by hand very quickly. Secure that. Whoops, I'm getting short sighted. Trim off the thread. And there we go. That's a superb little olive, emerging olive pattern that I'll be using on the European style nymph rigs later on the river today. I'll just add this to the family, and this gives you an idea why these jig hooks are so useful for these techniques. Um, they invert the fly, so the hook point is always fishing up out of the way of the snags. So we tend to snag the stream less uh, when we use these jigs hooks in these European style nymphing techniques. Let's see how effective they are later on. <laughs> 